Time now for the final session in the para dressage at the World Equestrian Games. It's the Grade 3 classification in the Tryon Stadium here in Tryon in uh, North Carolina. And it's been wonderful, the intensity of the competition and the quality across the board, across many nations, uh, winning medals here. But we're now down to the final eight riders who will be going in search of gold here. Those are the eight, including Stefan Zeibig, who will be first up, Emma Booth from Australia, and Natasha Baker, and the gold medalist from the individual and defending freestyle champion, Rix van der Horst. Erin Orford comes in, replacing Lauren Barwick, whose horse uh, is not competing. Erin Orford from Great Britain, stepping in as uh, the uh, ninth place rider from the individual competition. So, uh, uh, after having a slightly disappointing week, it's a chance for her to end on a high. But she will be second to go, and it's going to be, I'm pretty sure, hard fought. This has always looked a competitive grade. If you're just joining us for the first time, Lee Pearson uh, from Great Britain, Sir Lee Pearson, to give him his full title, uh, is um, on hand to cast his expert opinions, the most decorated para rider in world equestrian games history following his silver medal but he's watching stefan zybing i'm sure a rider he knows well start his quest to uh, back up his european silver of 12 months ago and maybe go one better here this afternoon riding feel good a 14 year old mare Does she look good, Lee? Yes, good afternoon, uh, spectators and viewers. She looks uh, spectacular. It was a wonderful halt, a square uh, entrance, a square halt, and a very expressive uh, medium trot. This is a compulsory movement, a, a serpentine, but with walk steps as they pass the center line many transitions scored 71.294 in the individual at the start of the week Germany of course team bronze medalists as well Quite a musical shift, wasn't it? Mm, good transition, though. This grade three, they're allowed to canter, but only in circles and straight lines. They can't do any lateral work in canter, but they don't have to include it at all. The, the whole floor plan, the compulsory movements are just walk and trot. As I explained in the previous grade, you don't get any um, degree of difficulty score, but you can up your rider score if you add difficulty and you're successful and in, in, in completing and that improves the whole picture. But if you add difficulty and it come in, you don't pull the movement off, then it lowers your rider score. Lovely transition. Perfect with the music.
the test of Stefan Zeibig to begin the final section of these para dressage here at the World Equestrian Games. Silver medalist 12 months ago in Gothenburg and riding this 14 year old mare. And Lee, good start? Yeah, I liked it. I liked it. The music was very active and Stefan's way of riding this, this horse. Uh, the partnership is very active as well. So they, they, they complemented each other. I think whether there was moments that they were slightly out of balance and mm, at times I think the floor plan was a bit complex coming down the long side and turning onto the quarter line, not the three quarter line, which is after the center line is a very harsh turn back into leg yielding. So once again, when you add difficulty, you have to make sure that it doesn't become messy and it just complements the whole picture that your horse is uh, enhancing your horse's best points and enhancing the music. Well, Lee, uh, obviously part of the British team that secured silver medal uh, yesterday with his young horse. Exciting prospect. What's the nickname for your horse? <laughs> Has, have you got one? <laughs> I've got a few rude names for which what, what? Um, I won't mention, but uh, no, she's called Styles or Styletta. Mm. Or on a bad day, she's called Maggot, I right. suppose. Right, yes. Uh, Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But she's extremely talented well, one one of the most talented horses i've ridden so i feel very honored to ride her but uh, this is a first championship and i was i've been very pleased generally well it's the first world championship for erin orford who competed last year for great britain in the europeans but stepping up onto the world stage uh, it's been a, a testing week for her by her probably her own admission just not quite had the rub of the green it just hasn't fallen for her and Sometimes it's all part of the learning curve for the young British rider, but she's stepping in to, as a, a replacement for Lauren Barwick. Last, I think she was the uh, uh, silver medalist at the last World Equestrian Games, but Erin um, Orford coming in, having finished ninth, so probably woke up this morning thinking I've got a day off, and then suddenly gets the call, off you go, right, you've got to go and uh, ride. Would it have been this morning? It was this morning. I don't know if we have a new structure now at these World Equestrian Games with the new FAI rules. We do a team test as our first test, then we do a championship test, and then the horses are re-presented um, in front of the vets, and that unfortunately hasn't gone well for Lauren. Maybe the horse is not coping with the heat. And, and that's when Erin got the call. Well, Dio is the horse she is riding, this 15-year-old mare, finished fourth in the freestyle 12 months ago, scoring 73.060. So uh, she would love to see a score in the 70s here this afternoon and uh, can relax and enjoy it. And, but it's all part of the learning curve as a young team rider, particularly when you're joining a, a team that consists not only of Lee, Natasha and Sophie Wells, the much decorated trio of British para dressage riders. So here goes Erin Alford with her freestyle. So we had a little bit of a rhythm change there in the extension. We can hope the judges didn't notice. She's a real bundle of energy, is Erin. Um, there's something about these power equestrian ladies that they were forced to be reckoned with. I think, in fact, it's probably all you para question <laughs> writers. <laughs> but Dior is a wonderful horse, but uh, she's not the easiest to um, handle and, and ride. She is a chestnut mare. Super walk movements.
interesting that when she came to the trot the, the music didn't change but if you hear the music doesn't have a specific rhythm so it means that it can match the walk and the trot if you've got a punchy rhythm then you need to be in the correct pace As well as Erin's disability affecting her upper limbs, many people don't realise with Erin that she's a above knee amputee as well. So it's remarkable how she rides with such talent and feel. And that's with both legs, not just one leg. She's uh, uh, above, le above leg amputee, above knee amputee. And some people end with a, a boom, and some people end with a, a, a statement, and I think that was a statement. And will she be pleased with that? I hope so. I hope so. I mean, just a confidence booster, just to experience it as Erin Orford and Dior leave the arena. Um, and uh, in the freestyle, there is Erin. Just studying concentration as she now leaves the arena. Next, we have a Danish rider coming in. It was fifth at the World Equestrian Games four, four years ago. But Erin now leaving the arena and wait on her score. But uh, we'll bring you Stefan Zeivig's score in a moment. The first of the eight riders to go. In fact, we can bring it to you now because he scored 71.487. And uh, so... Well, well, it feels like a score that will be beaten along the way with his horse feel good. So he may struggle to match his European silver of 12 months ago. And uh, when he finished behind uh, Susanna Hext, I think it was, if my memory serves me right, if I got it wrong. I'm not so sure. Yes, you, because she was in the grade three. Yes. Um, replacing a Natasha who didn't and compete. Has since been reclassified into, into grade two. Yeah, but... Uh, and obviously was vying for a spot on the team um, that you secured in uh, this year. Shows how competitive it is to get into the team. It was a hard well, fought battle, wasn't it? Now you're only allowed a squad of four to a championships, but there's five grades. And also you could have, like here, we have two grade three riders. Well, let's see what Erin Orford has done. And uh, just 71.073. She's into the 70s, not matching her score in the European Championships last year of 73.060, but she's into the 70s. And I think that uh, will just uh, make her feel a, a little better, uh, that it wasn't, it was smooth enough and uh, a, a chance to uh, just feel a little bit better after the frustrations of the early part of the week. So uh, that is Erin Orford with her score. And you say, will she be pleased with her test? You do realize we're, we're perfectionists. I know what you are. I know, so I, know you are. I think in 20 years, I've only been pleased with two of my dressage it's just tests. It's like talking to all sports men and women. When do you have that moment? It's like the person who... who do you know when I get that moment? When? When I've mowed the lawn and I've got to the end and I've completed something and I can turn away and go, I've completed something. The trouble is with dressage, you never get to well, the it's end. It's like sort of golfers hitting the perfect golf shot or whatever. The, the moment when you say, 
Mm, I got that right. But obviously, the only time you're going to get it right is if you score 100%. That's not going to happen. That's not <laughs> Not with dressage, judges, anyway. <laughs> but, you, no, but you will come off sometimes. Yeah. So you will have a you, moment when you... I think literally I'm, I'm, I've only had two tests where I thought that was amazing. My horse gave me everything. Wh which, where could. would they have been? I can't remember. I think one of them would have been on Xeon and, and one was certainly on Blue Circle Boy in the Athens 2004 Paralympic Games. A judge came up to me and, and he said afterwards, I have never judged such perfection in my life. And it was all tens and a nine. But if I watch that freestyle back, the halts were perfect. The way of going was perfect. There was one dodgy moment in a shoulder in where he saw a, a little bit of w a moist sand. And he went, oh, and I went, no, not today, not today. So, one, and how long have you been riding? <laughs> <laughs> Professionally, yeah. this is my 20th year. Yeah, but the, the, I mean, this is the, the, what is such a tough sport, an unforgiving sport. Caroline Nielsen, though, is next to begin on Davidoff. The Dutch, the Danish rather team just missing out on team bronze. But Caroline Nielsen, fifth in the World Equestrian Games four years ago, is off and running. Very unique, but a very unique start. Probably regular steps there and, and, and a nice stretch to the contact. And a great transition. I think the steps in the walk could have been slightly more regular. They have to be four beat. They can't go one, two, one, two. I'm enjoying this test. Yeah, it's a lovely picture. Lovely. Uh, they complement each other. Very elegant partnership.
So, finishing her test, Caroline Nielsen from Denmark. A pleasing test there with uh, the end there. And it's been a, another golden day for Denmark with Stina Kastrup uh, securing gold in the grade twos just uh, an hour or so ago. But uh, a, another good looking performance from one of the Danish members. And that was a, a pleasing test. And yeah, lovely. There was a lot. A lot of quality there, I think. I think it, a lot of uh, areas that the judges will like. And um, fingers crossed for Caroline. Well, uh, next coming in is the German rider uh, Angelika Traber, the anaesthetist, will be coming in to uh, do her test. So, coming out of the arena and uh, with uh, Stefan Zeibig out in front at the moment was 71.487. Erin Orford um, this week showing her in second spot was 71.073. Hasn't always had the uh, rub of the green this week. No, but it's all a massive learning curve. It's her first world championships and... Uh and she will be learning, and she will be learning the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And know that the only way necessarily, well, the only way is up. The only way is up. And uh, so we now just wait for the scores of rider number three before. And Shalika Traber came, came in. Privileged to have her in uh, the hot seat in the commentary position earlier on in the week privilege so, to meet her so she's coming into the arena now with the grade one two and three we're allowed to have a friendly horse join the the party um, often that helps to keep the horses more settled and you're allowed to have up to four people stood around the arena anything to um, keep the horse horses calm and happy so and uh so here she comes into the arena. Diamond Shine is the horse that she is riding, an eight-year-old. Like you, Lee, she's been uh, competing for a long time. She was at the, well, a 96 Atlanta, Atlanta Olympics, but you weren't even there. No, no, I, uh, I have ridden all my life since I was eight years old, but I started this profession 20 years ago. So 1998, and I went to the World Championships in Denmark in 1999. Um, so she's been a friend for a long time. Well, now let's see how Angelique can get on. She's seen the sport being transformed from the time when you just got a, in a hat, get on that horse and ride. But Pull a number out of a hat, matched with a horse, and off you go. Yeah, off you go. Get on with it. But not anymore. And uh, what an inspiration she is. But now she's beginning her test. So after the Athens Paralympic Games, um, well, before the Athens Paralympic Games, it was changed from a borrowed horse structure to an own horse structure because the riders wanted to be parallel to their able-bodied counterparts. And what a difference is made. And it's tr sport has been tra transformed and wasn't at the Rio Olympics, but still went down there. Lovely flowing test and movements. I think the judges are going to like this a lot. Angelica also only has three fingers on each hand, as well as um, her legs missing. So I'm sure there's a degree of contact and strength that's missing there that makes it even more amazing that she does what she does. Full time anaesthetist back in Frankfurt, but has various foundations in Africa as well where she both for disabled and on a medical basis, so she's an extremely busy lady.
The German team are extremely competitive and successful as well, so she's not a one-shot wonder. She's produced and campaigned many horses since 1996, and to keep maintaining your results and position. Commitment. Yeah. Finances, they eat money, these horses, you know, and turn it into poo. <laughs> it's about right. <laughs> oh, that was unfortunate. Oh. I think he genuinely had a fly on his shoulder. Very dramatic music, but I think suits the horse and rider partnership. And considering she doesn't have legs, what a wonderful straight end to that test. Well, Angelique Trevor, Angelique Trevor, part of that bronze medal winning team for Germany and has finished her test and good week it's been for the team so we're at the halfway point now four riders have completed and seeing how hard it is to keep the balance and the composure but she is terrific at that and a joy to watch her in action it has been during this week so we're just waiting on the score for Caroline Nielsen we haven't given that score out as yet as she leaves the arena we got the Australian rider Emma Booth on standby but now we can bring you Caroline Nielsen's score a 70.867 and it was 73 for artistic technical 68 but we've got we've had three scores in in a pretty close margin where do you think Angelique is going to be in that it's sort of probably well, you're, as you say, you're, you're I think most of it flowed. There was that incident. I didn't catch whether it was within a compulsory movement. I don't think it was because she then after then went into the into the trot campaign. Um, so we can hope that it wasn't um, just slightly got a little bit labored for Angelica. Um, you could see the horse was a little bit tired um, or maybe the, the heat and um, you could really see her riding for every single step and point so the judges if they appreciate that they'll be kind well we're settling down for the last uh, few riders now four riders to go and actually getting the score of uh, Angelique Travers and she's going to go in ahead of her compatriot because here it comes now it's 71.807 just inching ahead of Stefan who was on uh, 71.487 that's Stefan Zeibig so uh, there is the one two three four currently with four more combinations to come forward 71.807 uh, Angelica Trevor is in top spot but with the three riders four riders still to come every chance that those totals will be surpassed three in the 71s at the moment and uh, for Erin 71073 but now Emma Booth the Australian again who former inventor but was involved in a horrendous car crash which left her with serious injuries and actually 
killed a couple of horses that she was taking to an event as well or back from an event anyway it was something and everybody else in the car if my memory serves yeah, well it was just horrific horrific car crash but she has again been a shining light and uh, here australia of course uh, going well in the jumping competition my memory serves me correct i was told that they actually had to self-fund the, their jumping team to get here wow. um and uh, to get their team here emma booth though has uh, been a increasingly effective performer on the para dressage stage once again adopting to have the friendly horse and emma booth scored 71.618 in the opening individual competition australia did not do not have a team here She's riding Mogul Vans Zidane, which she co-owns with Joshua Brooker. Mm. A very elegant partnership, if everything goes to plan. And uh, she doesn't have any use of her legs either. She's paralyzed. Um, so if the horse gives her a good forward positive ride without losing balance, then it should be a very elegant picture. Just a knowing nod to the judges as she comes down the uh, side of the arena having a not to the B judge who is Britain Sarah Leach as she comes down at E it's uh, Christy Vasoki H Susanna Cunningham of Australia then there is uh, Hanneke Gerritsen of the Netherlands and Anna Plain are our five all-female judges for this final competition here blue circle boy um, who I campaigned in Athens got accused of winking at the judges on the way past the horse. <laughs> the horse. Okay. I, I, I promised the judge I never trained him to do that. He was well, just a bit of a flirt. <laughs> crafty horse. Anyway. Doing anything to get extra points for Daddy, I think. Well, anyway, here we go. Emma Booth raises her hand to signal to start the music and begins her quest to try and secure a medal for Australia in the para dressage freestyle coming in to the arena down the center line I think she means business. Great transitions there. And leg yielding, the opposite way of the turn you've just done adds more difficulty than leg yielding from a turn. And the same, the opposite way. The movements don't have to be a mirror image, but we feel that the judges like that. Great expression in the extensions and transitions into the extension and back again.
a massive risk doing uh, pirouettes when you, when you have no movement in your legs, but the horse kept the rhythm. They were very tight, quite breathtaking, but she pulled it off. feel the horse going a bit deep and round and you can see little movements with her wrist to say no I want you to stretch but keep that nose forward and out she's a she's a horsewoman through and through she can feel well we don't know how much she can feel but she can certainly f knows where the horse needs to be and she's placing him I think he heard the music change then and knew the extension was coming and tried to take home and she said, no, wait. Brilliant riding. Well, Emma Boos looks very happy with that. The Australian rider on Mogoven Zigzag, the 16 year old Bay Gelding. And well, has she impressed the judges enough to maybe move into the lead with three more riders still to go? They were, are the medalists from uh, earlier in the week. So. Uh, it's going to be a tough ask, but she has certainly begun to make an impact in the sport. And it was a very... I love I that. I think be, you, you were happy with it, weren't I you? I love that, yeah. I didn't know if she was going to play safe and just stick with the compulsories because she started very calm. But, um, and she didn't hide anything from the judges. She, she placed every, every move because with a freestyle, you can be a little bit crafty and and um, hide your weak areas and promote your positive areas but she more or less said here i am and i can do this well she's waving away smiling away i think she's chuffed a bit isn't she i would be <laughs> well be looking forward to seeing the score of course australia will be having aspirations of winning uh, individual gold in the driving which concludes on sunday with boyd xl uh, the marathon was taking place earlier today but while we await that score, here is the defending champion from four years ago and also the individual champion here this week, but on a different horse than the one she competed on in WEG. Finn's is the horse that she is riding, just eight years of age. And it was a stunning display on, at the start of the week with 73.735 really produced a performance raising the bar of the standard this horse set and was a huge contributory factor in helping to secure that team gold for the team the 26 year old again a very popular figure riding this young horse and can she find a way to produce something similar sure the music will be dramatic mm. and on point as they say but uh, getting ready just due to start at uh, 10 past the hour just trotting round 
I've never seen her ride uh, this horse before, um, so this is a, a first for me also. But it really pleasant picture, and when she went down to the walk, it's got a cracking um, over track, but stays in the one two three four one two three four rhythm. Um, so I can see why she uh, gained the points early on in the week. Well, again they. They've got a very strong team now of, of riders, have the Netherlands. Whereas it uh, hasn't quite gone as well for them in their other disciplines, the uh, jumping. They were right in the medals in uh, 2014. Exhale a breath there. I think there's just a bit of waiting going on. There's something going on. There's a bit of a delay because I can see some of the boxes. The judges aren't back in their position just yet. Something's going on. Maybe just delaying um, the start of this test. Is that? Can you see what's going on there, Lee? No, I'm just down below. Again, maybe still discussing something from from Emma's Emma Booth's test from Australia. I read the compulsories and uh, it says no canter half or full pirouettes but it doesn't mention anything about walks but maybe that's an area that they're discussing occasionally but not normally from a professional rider well, go they can miss out a compulsory well Christy Vazoki has got back into her allotted chair at E and so just delaying and adding to the tension for the rider, I would have thought, doesn't it? Just to sort of... Sometimes. It, it literally depends on the personality of your horse. More time in the... I mean, Ricks would have had more time around the outside than anybody else. That can settle a horse, especially a young horse, in front of a championship audience. Um, it might be to an advantage. Sometimes when you're not that strong in your body, it can be a disadvantage because you are set up to come into the arena, do one lap and get your test started. But she's a, she's a professional. She will know, like she did, whether it's better to stand a horse, walk a horse, put a horse more through in front of the leg. She, she will know what to do. Well, she's probably going to take it one more trot round. We haven't heard the bell as yet. And that won't happen until all is well and that everything is settled out. So, looking calm at the moment. There is the bell. Sigh of relief. Did you mind being delayed? It wouldn't bother me more time around the outside of the arena, the better. Somebody said to me only yesterday, they don't give you much time, do they? And I said, well, usually they give everybody the same amount, unless there's an issue to discuss like just. Well, now... Rick's van der Horst trying to successfully defend her title at the World Equestrian Games, but this time on a different horse, the horse being Finsley. So he's already a gold medal winner, a double gold medal winner. Very punchy music. And a lovely expressive extension. said before this horse can really walk he uses his back but stays connected to the bridle and stays in a clear four beat rhythm
I'd say if anything, the weaker areas of this horse are in the transitions. He's not quite as strong as the older horses. So he loses a bit of balance going down and occasionally hops in the upward transitions. But when he's in the pace, a super picture. And a great stretch there. And the judges will love that uh, Binsley stayed in front of the vertical while stretching. And more positive transition. Is this a, a lead taking over from Angelica in the lead? Or well, you're the expert? <laughs> Supposedly. No, I, there is moments of tension and, 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 and still weakness in the horse, but it's, the, it's all about the compulsories. The, the degree of difficulty doesn't affect the score that much, and the compulsories are lovely. I'd, I'd love to look at her test sheet and see if it was the Serpentine, which has got many transitions where she would have not gained the higher marks. But they just float around the arena. They do, it doesn't look a struggle. It's a lot of harmony. Well, so far, every individual has gone on to win gold here this week in the freestyle. And Rick van der Horst will be hoping that that run continues and that she can successfully defend her world title as well. But that's a good test, and she looks very pleased with it. Big pat for the young Finsley. What an exciting horse to have. If you're already winning gold medals, and you're just eight years of age. I'm jealous. I want to take that one home. Well, you've got one to take home. It might be all right. <laughs> Another. <laughs> you know we collect them, don't you? Well, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. But anyway... It is Rick Svanderhorst who is coming out of the arena, and I think they look pretty pleased. Now, this is the score that was obviously a delay. We saw the judges having a little bit of a conflict. Clearly, something was um, obviously dealt with, because look at the score, 66.970. It didn't feel like that kind of score, um, so something has obviously been adjudged. Uh, there's been something happened uh, with regard to that score of Emma Booth. So uh, we will endeavour to find out because clearly it didn't look like a 66.970. Uh, and given the way the judges were discussing, something obviously has caused them to mark Emma down. But uh, I think in, in that circumstance, it's usually a compulsory has not been done or that she's added a movement that is not allowed in, in her grade. But... She's a professional rider, um, she knows the score. Um, we, we were all interested to see because it was a beautiful test. Uh, well, we uh, know that she's down in the mix zone, so I'm sure she has it been explained to her, so we will um, get the answer. But now we are gonna watch while we think about uh, what happened to Emma Booth. Now this is decisive because Natasha Baker is coming into the arena. She's been a, a regular with me in the commentary position, but this is what she does best of all, which is trying to win gold medals. And she's riding this young horse, Mount St. John Diva Dannenbrock. Diva, to give her a very simple name, it's fairly obvious, but uh, this horse, so excited to be riding this horse. 
and can she produce a gold medal winning performance we don't know the score yet of Rix van der Horst but the music composed by Tom Hunt Natasha Baker coming in to the arena the Olympic champion sixth last time at WEG missed last year's European Championship while she was looking for a new horse but she is excited by the prospect of this nine-year-old maybe it wasn't the best entrance um, the Hulk was uh, not facing the judges quite as straight as it could have done oh dear 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 and I I think the horse got spooked a little bit oh no oh no maybe from the judge at sea such a shame do hope Natasha is all right she's wiping her show jacket down so I think I think she's okay well that is the first incident of that nature this week but she's all right the horse clearly is a young horse but uh, Natasha is all right she's up on her feet dear 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 well that was uh, a movement that wasn't required we say no but something happened to spook the horse and so clearly hugely disappointing and uh, coming out and always an anxious time you just realize how tough these riders are as uh, Mount St John Diva leaves the arena and how and how real the horses are yeah people say do you need a specific um, type of horse and I would say no they they don't know we have a disability a good a good horse is a good horse well I'm sure she's feeling really upset by that because I know she thinks the world of this horse and in comes um, my groom Jane with a mobility scooter at the ready <laughs> Well, it is a team effort when things go right and wrong. So uh, obviously, Jane Lees was waiting in the wings. Well, that is if needed. Well, Natasha getting into the, her wheelchair and will be feeling. I was just about to say, I'm sure she's going to give us all a wave. Well. Ooh. She'll be devastated, and that nobody wants that to happen in the arena. Well, remember, again, he didn't work for at the World of Question Games four years ago with Cabral. He didn't. He, it was a. I think she finished sixth uh, there four years ago, and the horse didn't give her his best. Clearly, this is uh, an unlucky competition for her. But gladly um, that she is all right. But she's smiling away. The um, and just one of those things. But. She was a silver medalist in the uh, individual and also in the team competition, but smiling away, but I'm sure inside will be so upset that the horse wasn't able to show her true paces and obviously just uh, showing her inexperience. But uh, Natasha, none the worse for wear and uh, obviously Another day, but the team quickly around her and uh, clearly anxious moments initially, but um, there's a big back, as you know, Lee, that you, the British team have a big support staff on hand, uh, physiotherapists, everything on hand. So let's just uh, confirm this um, while uh, we just uh, continue. We've got one more rider to come and uh, obviously and that one rider to come is uh, Rebecca Hart but given that the, there will be a bit of a delay because obviously with that test she was and she's probably continuing her warm-up at the moment um, we will bring you the score of Rick van der Horst after all that uh, drama and incident in the arena 
and uh, the score will be coming through. There are the judges and uh, bring you that score. And well, Rix van der Horst looking to defend her title. And on the evidence of that score, it's going to be a tough one for Rebecca Hart to overhaul because Rix van der Horst has gone into the lead on a score of 77.347. And it was a good test and thoroughly deserving of that mark. Yep, it flowed. It had excellent basic paces. It was a lovely floor plan. So, yep, I'm not surprised at all. Well, there is the leaderboard. Obviously, confirmation that Natasha Baker has been eliminated with that fall. But it just shows you that this is a tough game and uh, you never know what can happen. And then you know it's even tougher for para dressage riders. And I think the horse is not a, not a, a naughty horse. Uh, um, yeah, what you're saying, just the a bit of experience, something just... It looked like yeah. a fly -by bite or something, because off-screen as the horse was walking out, she was still kicking up a little bit behind as if she was uncomfortable or something was bothering the hind legs. And, uh, and, and um, as you know, she won, she meddled um, only a few days ago, so it was a, a one-off incident. And she did produce an excellent team test as well. So yep. uh, super. much better team test. So... Um, there was a degree of optimism that she was going to be able to put in a good performance here this afternoon. Well, now we're getting ready for the final test of the week here in the para dressage. Well, a dramatic few moments here. But Rebecca Hart is trying to add to what has turned into an excellent day for the Americans. They've been getting, they've got a couple of medals already. And they might now be looking for another medal with Rebecca Hart on El Corona Texel. Another young horse. Whoa, and another one spooking in that corner. I think she has the horse very much powered up to survive the elements of the freestyle. And she used that power then in the extension, which was brilliant. But then he uh, caught the flowers at F. Let's hope those judges are generous again and they don't include that in the mark for the uh, length of strides. Roxanne Trunel and Kate Shoemaker, the previous medalist today. Rebecca Hart getting a bronze medal early in the week as well. So maybe she could be looking if judges take that into account. So we'll be hoping for maybe a silver medal. Things are settling down now. There's a, a lot of bogeymen behind those arena markers and flowers, you know.
This is not up in the Rick's Van Horst performance level, is it? But it's it's all right, isn't it, Nick? Yeah, it's a nice picture. I think uh, Rebecca's horse isn't giving her as easy ride as he normally does. Um, and unfortunately, yeah, or well, fortunately for Rick's, hers just flowed from movement to movement. As I said before, slight weakness maybe in the transitions. As Rebecca's riding every single step of this just to maintain softness and harmony, yet keep the engagement. Well, the final test in the final class on the final day of the para dressage here in Tryon. It's Rebecca Hart and El Coronia Texel. Has she done enough to secure another medal on the week for the Americans and indeed for her as she uh, comes out of the arena? Um, there have been a, a thoroughly absorbing day sport here. Uh, under these uh, glorious sunny skies and the odd uh, a dramatic moment as we saw a few moments ago with that fall for Natasha Baker and uh, hopefully all all right but uh, Rebecca Hart uh, coming out to uh, and fitting that it is an American rider ending proceedings on at the World Equestrian Games here in North Carolina and uh, I'm sure she'll be looking at the scoreboard with interest. At the moment, the uh, gold is obviously with Rix van der Horst, Angelica Traber in silver, and Stefan Zeibig. So it's Germany two and three at the moment. But will it be another American coming forward onto the uh, podium to receive a medal in a few moments' time when they have the medal ceremony for four of the uh, classifications? Um, there was a delay uh, before the result of the grade four was determined. They'll be preparing the arena. We'll be taking a short break while they do that and before they get ready for the medal ceremony. But we'll confirm the score when it comes through to see exactly who is the gold medalist. If it's Rix van der Horst, she'll join Santa Wurtz as a uh, three gold medal uh, a rider with three gold medals and um, so what a week it has been for them Stina Kastrup coming away with a gold medal and uh, Sarah Morganti a gold medal as well but we're just waiting for confirmation as to the destination of the grade three classification what have you enjoyed your time in the commentary box Lee first experience of it um, yeah, I've thoroughly enjoyed yeah, it. I'm not, I'm not sure if it was any good or not. Well, and uh, you I know, it's like sometimes you. Yeah, I think you did all right. I did okay. Yeah, you did okay. You don't want to get too technical, but you don't want to. Yeah. Well, teach grannies how to blow eggs, do you? No, indeed you don't. But you just got to see as it is. Because yeah. sometimes commentators can be harsh on you, can't they? And you think, what are they talking about? No. <laughs> No, you commentators are just a lovely bunch. It's the judges that. Oh, we, okay. <laughs> all right. We'd love dressage without judges. Right. We'd be very spectacular, all of us. Yes, there would be tens all around. Yes, but, yes. But we're still waiting on the final score, just adding to the uh, tension, just to see. But, um, well, for you, um, I don't know how much you've been able to see, obviously, um, what's been from a para dressage point of view. Is it the fact that there's been. Well, I'll, uh, I'm going to put words in your mouth. What have you enjoyed most? I admire all the riders, literally from, from top to bottom, inside out. Anybody, even able-bodied people, get on a horse and, 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 and compete a horse. It's a very unique um, discipline. And, yeah, I admire all the power riders. Stinner, K Kastrup's... Um, um, well, well, let's see. Where, where's where's the gold going? The gold is going to Holland, but the silver is going to America. 
hence the reason for the big cheers in the background. So it is Rebecca Hart finally giving the best result on home soil. So a really good team effort in the end and a, an encouraging effort for where the uh, para uh, dressage is heading for America. So into uh, the silver medal position with 73.240 is Rebecca Hart. So it's Rix van der Hoef successfully defending her title, just like Sarah Morganti has done. Rebecca Hart in silver and a great bronze medal for the uh, vastly experienced Angelica Trabert with diamond shine, 71.840. Obviously, the dramatic moment there, Natasha Baker's fall in the arena when her horse spooked and uh, unfortunately she had a fall but she looked none the worse for wear as she left the arena so there we have it the thank you for your company we'll have the medal ceremony shortly of the four uh, grades that she is a triple olymp a triple world champion in with team gold individual and freestyle champion with a horse just eight years of age the fabulous Finsley who today once again was so on song and again on behalf of Longines it is Stephanie Lachat coming forward to present the Longines watches Angelica Trabert well I'm sure enjoying the moment and just proving the commitment that she has to the sport a full-time anesthetist but does so much more than just riding and helps out in so many different ways with charities in africa helping disabled children and there is a longine watch for our champion, a third launching watch. Now it's time once again to hear the anthem that has dominated the Tryon Stadium this week. There it is, the final medal ceremony concluding here in the Tryon Stadium. But it was a memorable week. And the horses again being given their true moment as well, because tell you what, with Finsley, just eight years of age, and uh, for Rebecca Hart, just a nine-year-old, El Coronia Texo, and an eight-year-old, Diamond Shine, Angelica Travert's horse. So, so what a moment for all three. And Rebecca Hart clutching two medals this week. But without question, the... Rick Vanderhorst and Santa Verts, the star turns this week and worthy champions. It's been a fabulous five days competition here in the Tryon Stadium with the individuals over the first two days, a gripping team competition that saw the Netherlands win by just 0.64 ahead of Great Britain with Germany getting bronze. And then the five medalists today to conclude a truly magnificent week sport and the action is done for these uh, para dressage riders rick van der Horst not keen to lead the podium what a day what a and week we of sport. sport.